Okay, uh, this afternoon I'm here with uh, Oliver Hillel from the Convention on Biological Diversity at the occasion of the Urban Nature Forum in, uh, in Brazil. And uh, we're here today to talk a little bit more about uh, ecosystems, ecosystem services, assessment in the urban context. So it's great to, uh, to be here with you again today. Uh, Thanks, last time we talked about these things I think was in Nagoya. Probably, yes. Uh, so let's just start off by talking about um, how urban areas or urban biospheres, if you will, might support uh, rich biodiversity. Well, um, this morning we heard uh, Dr. Thomas Elmquist say that in the historic genesis of cities, they uh, were set up in areas which normally have quite significant biodiversity. So I'd say that's the easiest thing to do because you, you basically just let to, you, you have to let nature come back. You have to let it do its own work. So uh, in many places like Mexico and Sao Paulo and even Belo Horizonte itself, bringing biodiversity back into cities just basically means stopping it, uh, stop impeding it mm. from developing naturally. So a lot of it will be done by restoring the ecosystems that were there and in a lot of places, particularly in, in the developing world, it means allowing the gene banks that very often are very close to the cities themselves mm -hmm. to come back into cities. But this, this having been said, in many cases the ecosystems have been changed so radically that you actually have to bring in new infrastructure. You have to think of biophilic design, you have to think of roof gardens, you have to think of vertical gardens. Uh, the example of the city of Singapore with their trees, mm -hmm. which are beautiful and work wonderfully well, are also very significant. So I think uh, that the answer is a combination of just letting nature do its course and stop the barriers to that, and of course bringing new and creative uh, structures that benefit from all the new technologies that we do have available. Nothing needs to be created. It's interesting that that sort of alludes to kind of recasting ourselves as humans in terms of where we are in ecosystems, especially in cities, which leads us to this discussion, this larger discussion on, on sustainable development. Um, so what do you think the, the role of uh, these urban areas or urban biospheres is in the sustainable development uh, discourse? Um, I'd say that there are probably uh, three ways to look at that. The first is that cities are for technology overall and we've heard that very often that they're laboratories for innovation mm -hmm. that cities have uh, naturally people come together from different cultures they come together from different technological backgrounds mm -hmm. even some uh, local and indigenous communities mm -hmm. for instance it's a, it's a well-known fact that the majority of indigenous and local people today live in cities as well so um, I think the role of, of those urban uh, ecosystems or biospheres is to allow laboratories for new forms, uh, mostly of the mosaics of, of land use mm -hmm. that exist in cities. So uh, the idea of a biosphere reserve in the city of Sao Paulo, for instance, has a, a whole belt of biosphere mm -hmm. reserves around it. That's uh, it, it's the, also the bringing back the quality of life because we have lost over the, particularly in Brazil over the last 60 years, but in India and China we are losing uh, that biosphere. So we have to bring it back into the cities. We have to create a new concept of city that has biodiversity as part of it. And that leads me to the to the second one, which is education. Mm -hmm. We need to bring biodiversity and urban biospheres back into town so that people become aware of how dependent they are yes. for food, for air, for all kinds of things. And the third I was going to say is strategic importance for food security. Uh, we need to bring uh, some biodiversity back into cities because the ecosystem services that they provide will become more and more important as huge transportation systems become more and more unfeasible. So we need to bring it back to make sure that urban citizens have food security and the security of the ecosystem services from nature. So a, a, a significant challenge, it sounds like, in terms of governance. Uh, there's there's a, a number of complexities there, and when you think about urban biospheres, that yes. needs to be considered. I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about how 
decision makers might use uh, a city biodiversity assessment or some of these other tools that we're discussing to shape urban development consistent with, with uh, those three points that you just made? I think the, the launch of the Cities and Biodiversity Outlook in its two formats, one is more the policy and action oriented format and the other one being more like a substantive scientific mm -hmm. assessment as a background, will provide an extremely uh, valuable tool for urban and many other political decision makers because we need to rethink that. Yeah. We, we, you just said it. I mean, we need to change the paradigm in people's minds. And even though I think the vast majority of the more proactive and modern decision makers have heard already something about that. They've never seen it consistently explained and with all the implications. So the CBO will bring both a new awareness of all those realities, uh, particularly through the idea of those 10 key messages. The CBO being the... The, the Cities and Biodiversity Outlook, yeah, yeah in its two versions. Mm -hmm. Uh, it will bring those two key messages which I think make it easy for a politician also to pass it along. Mm -hmm. So I'd say it's for personal learning of them, it's also for them to get the tools so that they can communicate that mm -hmm. to citizens. And last but not least, I think it'll be a door and, and a kind of a way for them to access the diversity and the immense wealth of information that is already available. So the CBO will be kind of a door for people to understand all the other sources of information that are already available. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So given that, uh, uh, the sort of trick question, if you will, is <laughs> what, what will be the most important uh, biodiversity and ecosystem services uh, issue, you think, to address in, in urban areas? Well, I, I, I was thinking about that, that um, question, and I think, uh, arguably, if you look at the strategic point of view, I'd say uh, you have to, first of all, you have to really, uh, it, it will be an educational issue. We, uh, people have lost, and I speak as a Brazilian, urbanization in Brazil, and, uh, Brazil happened in the 60s. So since 1970, we've been urban animals to the point of 85% today. So we have completely lost. The, the, the concept that, uh, you know, so many examples, people thinking that milk comes in, 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 in containers or that, that they don't know the difference between a wasp and a bee in Germany anymore. Kids don't know that difference. So we have to restore that. We have to make people aware that there's no way that there will be um, life in a city without nature behind it. But uh, what, what I think will be one of the biggest challenges that we're seeing throughout the world is how does a decision maker at the top of a municipal government understand what the citizens want and what they expect? Mm -hmm. Issues are coming in a quicker and quicker cycle. Uh, difficulties come from the base and just the usual democratic system of electing your city councillors and then expecting those city councillors to take the message up to the mayor, that's too slow when we have social media, then we, when we have all those social movements. So I think one of the key issues is representation and governance. How will tomorrow's mayors and, and governors uh, be quick enough to react to the sea of issues that come from the ground. Mm -hmm. And I think probably social media is going to play a much more important role in that than we can credit for that. Well, uh, thank you very much for that answer. And I think it's, uh, it's uh, interesting to see how this might play out in the next couple of days here in in, uh, in, in, the Ur in Belo Horizonte, yeah. in, in the Urban Nature Forum, but certainly even more so as we, as we lead up to Rio Plus 20. Yeah. So, th so thank you very much for taking the time to uh, have this conversation with me well, today. Thank you, Look Keith. forward to working with thank you more. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.